Hi there, my name is D.G. Valdron. I am a writer of speculative fiction and sundry other things. I do fantasy, I do horror and science fiction and alternate history and all those things. I also do a lot of nonfiction um, and I have books out and stuff. Anyway, so this is my attic. Uh, an attic is a place where you keep overlooked treasures. You keep the eccentric, the odd, the sometimes dusty, um, but always the interesting and little known. It's the place for hidden gems and fond memories. So I think good title. Anyway, so today we have a film review. I went to see The Beekeeper. Everyone, need your attention, please. I'm going to burn this place to the ground. And honestly, I didn't have much in the way of expectations. I thought this is just going to be violent trash. And yeah, oh yeah, it was. It was totally violent trash. I mean, it was deliciously, mind-bogglingly uh, dumb and violent. And sometimes, you know what? You're in the mood for something like that. But here is the interesting thing with the beekeeper. Um, there was an idea at work. I did not expect that. Uh, you know, so I'll, I'll just go into it. So what's the beekeeper about? Um, well, it turns out it's about fishing, P-H-I-S-I-N-G. Uh, the book, the, the movie opens with this nice little old lady and she has this pop-up on her computer screen. And so she's given a number to call and she calls in and the next thing, her entire life savings are just taken away. She loses her pension. She loses her account. She loses her, uh, you know, the charitable foundation's money that she, she volunteers for. Uh, even her credit cards get maxed out and, and she kills herself. Horrible. Um, and that's us. Literally, that is you and me and all of us. Because what's going on there is fishing, uh, that we are all ducks in a row. I don't know about you, but I get at least a few junk phone calls uh, every week that tell me that my card, uh, my credit card has been misused and they need to verify it. I get calls, you know, offering me prizes. I get all these junk emails. I go on social media and there's all kinds of fraudsters that are looking to, you know, get a line on. And all they have to do is get us once. All we have to do is make one mistake. Click on that one bad link out of the thousand or two thousand attempts that they've made to trick us. And nobody cares. Nobody does anything. Uh, you look at the CIA and the NSA. They're, they're off doing, you know, whatever in the Middle East or, or spying on, on other countries. They don't care. The FBI is not doing anything. The, the RCMP and the Mounties aren't doing anything. The local police aren't doing anything. What can the local police do? You know, you've got cyber security fraud going on in, uh, in Russian labs or, or in the middle of Nigeria uh, or potentially down the street. They can be anywhere. So we have this environment where we are all prey where we can all be that little lady. Um, and that's got a lot of, that, that creates a lot of emotional power, a lot of emotional energy. And that's the energy that the beekeeper is using. That, that is the energy that fuels this entire movie because we have this opening where a little old lady gets scammed with her life savings. And for every single one of us, we think, oh yeah, that, that could be mom, that could be grandpa, that could be me. And what we get out of this is a superhero whose job is to go and not necessarily rescue, but to get justice, to balance the scales. That's the entire plot of the beekeeper. Some little old lady gets hacked on a fishing attempt and uh, somebody, Jason Statham, goes out and he's the superhero. And you know what? I kind of like that. I mean, look, just between you and me, I'm not sitting here worried about Thanos snapping me into oblivion. I, you know, that's, that's Marvel movie stuff. It's great. I like it. Not a problem. 
but I am genuinely worried about getting my credit card ripped off. I really like the idea of, of a superhero who's, you know, out to fix something like that. So this is actually, believe it or not, uh, a movie with kind of a social conscience. It's a movie that points out people really are hurt by this awful evil shit. That, that the Jordan Belfords of the world with their locked, with their yachts and their limousines and their, you know, super advanced lifestyle are basically building it on fraud, on, on stealing from ordinary people. There's a lot of class dynamics in this movie uh, that, uh, that really are, are apparent. Um, now let's look at Jason Statham's character. The guy is just one step up from being a homeless person. Literally, you know, there he is in, in overalls, in dirty faded clothes, you know, pr practically, you know, threadbare rags. Um, he, he drives a battered, beat up secondhand, like, you know, 15 year old pickup truck. He, he can't be bothered to shave. He's, he's just every, every like, you know, manual labor you've ever seen. He's, he's basically just, you know, uh, a working class guy trying to get through life. And so he's, he's the hero. We have a working class hero. And all, all the bad guys, the bad guys are rich. The bad guys have nice clothes and nice suits and really nice hair and a lot of attitude. And the higher you go, you know, the worse they get. Uh, so as, as it goes up the, the trail, uh, as it goes up the pipeline or whatever we want to call it, it, it just goes uh, further and further into, into this wealth, this opulence. So, you know, uh, Jason Statham in his working class outfit, uh, with his working class sensibility, raids the call center, and we get to meet some of the call center people, and they're all white collar, they're all office workers, and and the guy that's running it is a guy in a suit with a tie and and you know uh, a really expensive haircut, uh, and then we go up to the next level, and it's just a bigger call center, and it's more exciting, but it's also scuzzier and nastier, um, and then we go up to the next level above that. And oh, it's Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk or um, you know uh, Elizabeth Holmes or, or one of those types, you know. And they're they're enlightened and and fun and hip. And they're you know driving around on a you know riding around the office on a skateboard and they've gotten a, a Tibetan masseuse and and uh, all of this all of this really high end all of this really new age lovely stuff um, and. As it turns out, uh, this version of Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, they're basically a crook. You know, I mean, their advertising is, is that they're the tech genius, they're the new wave, they're, they're the new stuff. Um, but when it comes right down to it, all of this guy's money is coming through fraud. Everything else is just a sideline, it's a sideshow, um, it's image, it's front. Now, where they're really making their money in this movie is through fraud, through stealing little old ladies' life savings. That's their industry. Um, and you know what? I think there's a bit of social commentary there. Because although we admire all these billionaires, the Elizabeth Holmes, the, the Bezos, the, the Gates, the others, when you take a good look at them, at all these people, they're really awful. I mean, they're really seriously awful. I mean, Bezos, the Amazon guy, right? He's worth tens or hundreds of billions of dollars. And uh, he is a guy who's made Amazon into a toxic sweatshop where the working conditions are absolutely horrible. And he has used Amazon um, to in, in really filthy, uh, obnoxious, illegal business ways the Beekeeper is basically a movie that says all these rich people out there, they're all ripping you off. They're all really criminals. They're, they are all predators preying on you like you're in a shoot, like your ducks in a shooting gallery. And I think, you know, wow, I, I was sitting there in the movie theater. I wasn't even expecting this level of politics. But yeah, I mean, it's right there. And it goes on up. So above, you know, the Bill Gates wannabe or the Jeff Bezos wannabe, 
it turns out his mom is the president and, and he's got like the former director of the CIA on the payroll. And it turns out as we go forward that, oh yeah, you know, his mom is the president because, you know, she got all this illegal, um, illegitimate, fraudulent money funding her campaign that the CIA guy uh, basically handed over like CIA technology so this guy could select his targets, you know, so he's using uh, government software. And, and so what you've got is a movie that's basically saying, oh yeah, yeah, these uh, super billionaires, they're, they're actually corrupt predators who are, are really stealing your life savings, stealing your whole life. And, and they're saying, not only is law enforcement, not only is government not doing anything about it, but they're in on it, that the whole system is corrupt from top to bottom. Well, wow. I, I did not expect this. And they maintain this. So, you know, Jason Statham basically looks like a working class guy. He's, you know, one step up from being homeless. At one point, he says uh, about the little old lady uh, that he's fighting for, she was the only person who ever took care of me. And there's a lot of talk in the movie about, you know, going up and, and going up the chain of command that it goes up to the queen and, and the hive is contaminated or, or sickened or whatever. And it's about keeping, keeping the system honest. That's what the beekeeper officially does is they keep the system honest. Um, and on the other side, even while we've got Jason Statham as basically a blue collar superhero or the working class superhero who's doing his all of, almost all of his stuff in like, you know, a cap and jacket and blue jeans and overalls. And the message is, is that, oh yeah, those $10,000 suits and those $100,000, um, you know, Escaladas or, or whatever, the private jets, all of this is being bought with corruption, with uh, predation upon you. So, wowzers. Anyway, so that's the beekeeper. Um, there's a lot of violence and it's kind of fun because you're really rooting for him. Uh, and sometimes, especially early on, it's sadistic as hell. My fingers, they cut them off. Oh, what the fuck, bro? Don't move. Uh, but it's it's fun. If you want a, a good popcorn, you know, punch and kick movie, uh, this is it. Uh, and there's a lot of B puns. Just, you know, though they're terrible, terrible puns. But, you know what? I can live with it. Anyway, so my bottom line on The Beekeeper is, yeah, this is a movie um, that is pretty much your run-of-the-mill, violent, trash, uh, you know, adrenaline junkie thing. But what sets it out from the part, what makes it different from, say, The Expendables 4, is that it has ideas. It has an idea. It has um, an emotional foundation. It's a movie about something. And this... This is actually interesting because I think that really a good movie, a movie that is worth watching, should be about something. It should be grinding an axe somewhere. It should have something to say. And, you know, if some movie has nothing to say, why are you watching it? Anyway, thank you very much. You have a nice day.